everyone. I'm your host today, Amy Hood of Hoodspa Design, and welcome to Adobe Type Bootcamp. We've been having a great time this week. Uh, yesterday, we did taking vector sketches or sketches to vector for lettering. If you missed that, everything is in a playlist. Uh, Andrew, our producer, put it all together in a nice place for you all. And so you can go back and watch yesterday and the day before stream if you want to catch up. The first day, we kind of just went through rules of pairing type. But today, today is the exciting thing. Today is how can we take existing fonts that are already so lovely, so beautiful, these type designers have spent so much time making awesome things for us. How do we take that and then make it our own, make it a little bit more custom? Um, maybe we're using it for a logo or maybe we're using it for album cover or poster design, but how can we give it a little extra zhuzh? So that's what we'll be doing today. Um, I guess we'll just jump straight into my screen because we only have 25 minutes, so we're cutting it close. <laughs> um, chat, where are you at? How's it going? How's everything? Um, we see a lot of friendly faces in the chat. Sam Peterson is our moderator, so he'll, if you have any questions, just let us know. Um, so the first thing that I like to do when I'm thinking about how can I make this type my own, obviously you want to start with some great bones. You want to start with a typeface that already has a lot to work with and has a lot of personality. Um, especially if you're doing, um, logo design, you want to have like little things that make it ownable. And that's some just means like little unique quirks and the font can be fairly simple and you can add those quirks. So, uh, maybe it doesn't have to be a really personality font, but. The first thing I like to think about is how do the letters interact and what does that mean? Well, the C here, you can see in this word coconut, there's uh, the counter, this negative space within my C is really optical for hiding this O in potentially. Like it makes a nice little pocket that my O could potentially live in. So maybe that's one thing that I try to play with. So I'm just going to jump into my piece of type here. I'm going to take out the C so it lives on its own. I'm going to scale it way up to where it kind of hugs this O. And we've already got something really cool going on. And that's just playing with size and playing with how these letters kind of live next to each other. So I would probably go ahead and um, create outlines on that piece of uh, that character, the C, and just go to object, path, offset path. And I'm just gonna make it a little bit thinner. We're gonna go negative 10 pixels and that'll just bring in our shape make it a little bit less heavy so that it kind of matches the weight on the rest of the type. And you might have to do a little finessing, like I'm noticing the horizontals strokes on my C are a little bit light. So you might have to do a little finessing, but that already looks so cool. So what else could we do here? Maybe we take this T, which is kind of short right now, and we take it out, put it on its own little type path. We're gonna outline that type, go to type, create outlines. I'm sure there's a shortcut for that, but I've never learned it. And I'm gonna make the T a little bit taller. And what if, what if we play a little bit with this crossbar? So I'm just gonna see what does it look like if that goes a little further out? Maybe I extend it on the other side as well. Hey, Julia Baca in the chat, what's up? We've got an Adobe legend her herself joining us. And I'm just gonna kind of see what it looks like if I just extend that out. We may not like it. It may not look a little bit, maybe too much like a cross. We don't want it to look like going to church. We want it to look like, you know, a delicious coconut. So maybe we don't do that. But the great part is, is that if you, what I usually like to do when I'm doing custom type like this or customizing fonts, I should say, is I like to option drag and make a lot of different, a lot of different options that I can play with. So I can say, okay, this one looks great. What, what do we do if we do a little bit more? So maybe it's something like adding an underline. You can do that by just getting your rectangle and kind of matching the weight of your C. It's a little bit heavy, but we can continue to adjust. I'm just gonna direct select my bottom two anchor points and bring that up a bit. And maybe we just cut this C here. We just cut off the terminal or the stroke ending there. And we say like, what if this just continues on and underlines the whole thing, kind of like the Kanoko. I think Kanoko does that on their logo. That's like one of those great old logos. So now I'm just selecting anchor points with my A shortcut for direct select. And I'm just kind of seeing what works. Does that look cool? Is it still legible? It kind of has a cool wave effect now, which is neat. Um, since, you know, coconuts are in Hawaii, they're very tropical. Um, obviously we want to make sure that the kerning looks nice. I feel like the N and the U are a little bit close. So maybe we just add a little bit more space there, but you can see we already have two pretty cool options and that's just playing around with, you know, how the letters live next to each other. Another cool thing is like, say we wanted to add a descender. Um, 
maybe it hugs around this U. You see this really nice kind of like curvier. I think we could easily make it to where the end kind of comes down and hugs that U. So let's go ahead and create outlines. And then to make it easy on myself, well, now let's make it hard. <laughs> I'm going to first just bring up my N a little bit because I'm going to need a little room to create my to create my curve. And I'm going to go ahead and just do a line segment. I'm going to use a path and then I'm going to use a stroke and I'm just going to outline it to get started. I feel like that's the easiest way. So I've kind of drawn my path. I'm going to switch to the outline instead of the fill and I'm going to increase my stroke to let's see what is matching. Let's do 22. That looks great. So before outlining, I can just see like, how's this looking? What is this? How are we, how are we vibing here? I won't outline it until it feels like it kind of works. So we can play with this. Maybe it goes a little bit more. You can see how that all looks really nice. And whenever I add um, extra swash and swashes or things like that to my layer forms, I always try to pay attention to the end strokes that are already existing in the typeface I'm using. So you can see these are all kind of vertical cuts right here on this C right there. Um, so maybe I decide that I want to match that here and I'm just going to create a little box to test out my theory, make it white and see what it would look like if I match that end so that it feels like it's a part of the typeface. So that's another option that could be playful. I probably wouldn't use this option because it feels a little awkward to me that the N is the only thing coming down. I would probably want like a few more things coming down if I did do that, but I think it's a good start. So that's one thing that you can think about. Let's move on to the next thing. Crossbars. I feel like crossbars are such a fun thing to play with and um, stroke endings. So a stroke ending could come up. That's just, you know, anywhere that a, a, a stroke of a of a character ends like this S right here um, or up on this T crossbar or crossbar. So I'm just gonna outline my type, type create outlines. And I'm just gonna start playing with these. Let's go ahead and just pull this all the way over. What if this T, if I double click in, kind of goes down below the baseline a little bit. I like it when logos, the the capital letter or the first letter kind of is a little bit bigger. I think that just kind of adds importance and says, this is a logo. This isn't just sentence case. This is special. This is snazzy. We're zhuzhing. And what else could we do? So this looks great. Let's option drag. Let's make another copy and let's see what else is, is available here. If we're thinking about like stroke endings. What's up, Alessandra? She says, ooh, everyone loving these. All right, so let's play with this. Let's say I like when I see those vintage old um, logos where it's like the, the stroke ending kind of whips up around and it forms an underline. I think that's really neat. So let's just draw that in with our pen tool roughly. We can adjust a little bit later. I'll zoom in here, following my path. And let's see if we can't make this work. I find the hardest part is figuring out how much space like here like how much space is a good amount of space. I'm going to add an anchor point because I feel like we're missing, we're missing one. And then it's just kind of finessing the handles. So if I kind of go up like that, try to match the, uh, the weights overall, it's kind of looking interesting. I would definitely have to finesse and I might even shorten like this all is a little bit high maybe but it's, it's looking nice. There's personality there. It doesn't feel like we just typeset it and called it a day. It looks like, oh, wow, this is custom. They took the time. So there's something neat there. So if that underline's thick, maybe we thicken up this top crossbar. Maybe that's cool. Maybe that adds some fun. Okay, that's looking cool. And I think, think if we thicken up that one, I think we also thicken up this one here just a little bit. And maybe we create some with variation so that it still feels kind of interesting. And maybe we even do that up here too. I'm gonna go ahead and just extend this up, extend this up. And maybe it's kind of like getting getting thicker at the end and starts kind of more tapered. It's looking cool. But you can see how much personality that adds from what we had before. It's not perfect, but we only have 25 minutes. So we're, we're just doing our best to kind of give, give ideas. And we'd love for you to test these out. Definitely take these you know, see how you can play with them in your own work and tag us at hashtag Adobe live and at Adobe. Okay. So the next one that I think is quite fun to use, um, 
If you have something like a sans or a serif, what would it look like if you blend it with some other style? Like taking this really great sans serif that we have here. This is actually a font that I designed called Venice, available on our site, not to plug it, but um, it's really fun. It's really chunky. What if, what if we add serifs? Does that make it look a little bit more classy? Does that make it kind of have maybe like a Cooper vibe? Would that be cool? I'm gonna go ahead and outline that. The shortcut is Command Shift O. And let's draw one serif and just kind of see what we could be playing with. What if it's kind of like a Clarendon, you know? Kind of like a bracketed serif. And a bracketed serif just means there's a slope into the serif. See how that immediately adds a sense of, it's a little bit more serious, isn't it? It's like, it's still fun, but it's a little bit more serious. So now I can just, you know, take those serifs and uh, just kind of bring them into my other, my other corners. Maybe I go ahead and just sh shear this so that I can get the other side, something close. And we'll straighten this out. And that's pretty fun. See how that immediately changes that? And we're going, these serfs are pretty wide, but let's just bring those in like a teens. Jefferson Miller says, ooh, that's nice. Vintage print ad vibes. Yes, that's what we're going for. I'm, I love all things vintage. I'm wearing my favorite vintage tee with my vintage type on it. It's so fun in honor of type week. So if I take this and I go ahead and just rotate it, I can get some of these bottom ones and see how that looks. But you can see how it just immediately adds a different kind of vibe, a different kind of personality. And in fact, if I rotate this one from the opposite side, it'll be much closer. And we'll see if Smart Align can get me close. There we go. Get that bottom. Just kind of see how this is looking. I think I'll take that one off because there's just not a lot of room in there. And guess what? We make to, we get to make the rules here. I might take that whole thing off. What do we need that for? I don't even think there is a serif down there. <laughs> how easy I for, how quickly I forget. So for the other side, I'm just going to go object transform reflect because I love shortcuts. I love, you know, using duplicates as much as I can. And then what if, ooh, you know what I've seen recently? I love the idea of having the eye kind of touch the tittle, which is just the dot of your eye, like that. Uh, tell me that doesn't look great. Look at that. Look how much personality we already have. This is so fun. Um, if I add a anchor point with my pen tool, um, I'm just going to just create a little bit more connection here because everything else is so thick and heavy and that just feels a little bit fine. Okay. So that, oh, tell me that doesn't look cool. Tell me that doesn't look cool. So this is a little bit rough, but you kind of get the point. So we can finish that up a little later if we have time, but I, I know that we have, the time is short. So let's go to our next tip. What if, what if we play with character sizing and overall shape? So what does that mean? Like on these first and, and last uh, characters, the G and the S, what if those are bigger? What if those descend down? Like I said, if everything's the same size, there's kind of like a meh quality. It feels like it's just typeset, but if you add different sizes to the, to the, you know, just these beginning letter forms or even the beginning and the end, then it really starts to feel like a logo. It feels, starts to feel like somebody took some time, some care. So let's just go ahead and size that up. Let's go to 315, 316. And we'll just option drag to copy that G and type in our S. And we're going for a horror vibe here. This is kind of like, like my friend Neri works at um, 20th Century in Disney and he did the poster, or he was art director on the poster for Barbarians recently, which was a twisted movie, but I loved the vintage horror vibes, kind of Stephen King vibes. So, and it was very much kind of like this. So this is looking cool. The great thing about using a typeface too is see how my G and my S are really heavy right now. They kind of don't blend with the, the rest of the letter forms. That could be a style choice and that could be cool. But what if we try just, we've got semi-bold. What if we try, oh, I don't have it synced. You know, we're just going to keep it like this then. But you could have, what I was going to do is you could have done like medium condensed and that might match it a little bit better because it's so much larger. So that already looks cool. Let's option drag it. Let's see what else we can do. This is kind of a little bit of a Stranger Things vibe because we're using, uh, I think, what is this new spirit semi-condensed? I love it, it's so good. It's kind of like ITC Bengat, but not exactly. So the next thing we could do is let's outline our type again and let's give it an arc on the bottom. I think that could be really cool. Let's go to envelope distort and you're gonna go make with warp. 
And the first one that's clicked on is arc, but let's do, we want to do arc lower because I want there to be an arc on the bottom baseline only. And it's going to look weird at first. I want it to arc up, but we'll kind of mess with it. I'm going to say, okay. Ooh, okay. I'm going to stretch it. Don't hate me, but I'm going to stretch it. This is giving now, um, this is giving like Olive Garden vibes or something, some sort of <laughs> like a family Italian eatery, <laughs> but you kind of get the idea. <laughs> um, but I, I like where that's going. There's something interesting there. It's feeling very much a lot more dynamic, a lot more exciting, and that's really cool. Um, what else could we do here? I think that it could be fun. You can play with underlines. That's another thing. Sometimes the customization doesn't have to be connected directly into your characters, right? It can be something free free flowing like a like an underline. Now, one thing that you have to think about when you're adding customizations, just like we did over here on the coconut letter form, we made sure we wanted to match our cuts. You want to try to match the styling of the font that you have. So it's not really obvious that you kind of Frankenstein it. You want it to look seamless. So on this font, we have very rounded edges. So obviously this hard edged underline is not, it's not fitting, right? So we want to round those corners. So if you select your rectangle, just hit A, your corners will pop up in your toolbar at the top and you can just start adding some rounding to that corner. And you'll just kind of test like, is that kind of looking good? I think we need a little bit more. Let's go to six. And yeah, that's looking a lot better. And doesn't that just look like a book cover or, or a movie poster or something? You can totally see it. Um, other things that you can do are when we talk about, if we think about how do the letters interact and we, we kind of apply that here, let's option drag one over. I see this a lot. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Let's go command shift O to outline. I just learned that key command today just by going in the toolbar enough to see it. And we're just gonna select the bottom half of our eye because I totally see a world where it could live tucked into this L because I really hate when the kerning, it, there's like all this empty negative space. It's not so bad on this font because it's a very condensed font, but who knows, maybe we can make it look a little bit better. So maybe it lives here. Maybe that looks terrible, but you never know until you try. So let's give it a go. We'll bring that in. To this day, I'm still torn on kerning and does this look right? Doesn't this look right? I feel like it's an endless shuffling of pixels. I might just kind of decrease the size of that, that beak on that L so that my eye doesn't get too dwarfed. And we'll just kind of scoot our N in and we'll scoot that in as well. So it doesn't look like it's hanging out on its own. And that's just a matter of shuffling, keeping on shuffling. But that looks, that looks pretty cool. That looks pretty cool. I don't know if I would use it. Maybe I would if like there was an eye dot that was like a little gremlin. That could be fun. I don't really know how I would draw a gremlin right now, but that could be fun. Let's just do a circle for now. I think that's going to ruin the ruin the overall vibe, but there's so many options that you can use. Yeah, that's not it. That's not it. <laughs> but again, you don't know what works until you try it. So already we have three really interesting options. Bottom left is way too Papa John's, but we're getting somewhere. <laughs> Andrew Hockreddle said, every day I'm shuffling, shuffling pixels every day. It's just pushing things a little to the left, a little to the right until we die. <laughs> um, okay, next tip. We have a couple more minutes left. Um, I think it's really fun when there's some sort of play between uh, letter forms to where they make a ligature. Now what's a ligature? That's just where um, two characters are connected into one character and it just saves, it's usually to save it from being awkward. You know, usually an F and an F next to each other can create some awkward spacing or an F and a T. Those would be common discretionary ligatures that you would see a lot in different typefaces. This typeface right here actually looks really beautiful. It doesn't even need its new spirit again. It doesn't even really need anything for awkward spacing, but we could add something just to make it look cool. So let's go ahead and outline this type, step one. And I think obviously the first thing you think of is what if we just make it a continuous stroke. I love a continuous stroke. If there's like a TT, an FF where there's crossbars, why not just continue that on? It already looks so intentional. And, and that is definitely, it, and it was so easy. I think that's a great look. So let's try that first. Let's option drag down. What if this A gets bigger and this can be hard. I think what I'm gonna do is like, I'm thinking what if the crossbar basically 
from the A extends across to the FF. So what I think we need to do is just delete the crossbar we have and start from scratch. So I'm just gonna go C for my shortcut to my scissors, cut these two anchor points here and delete the crossbar because we're gonna redraw our own. Okay, go ahead, delete it on this side. And I'm gonna use my pen tool and just continue on this path. And we have a really nice option with no, I'm gonna actually move that down as well. So we can now create our own. I'm gonna move the whole thing down and I'm going to delete this and just duplicate that. Now I'm gonna use my rectangle tool and I'm going to test the width on, on the A crossbar because it's going to need to be similar so that it can go all the way across. This is rough now, but just stick with me, stick with me. <laughs> so if we direct select all of this, I've directed selected basically the top of the A and the whole left stem. And you know what, let's select this as well, the whole crossbar. And I'm just going to extend it up along so that it's a little bit higher. It's going a little bit above my ascender for my Fs. And then I'm going to select my leg on the left-hand side on that thin, that hairline, and I'm just going to extend it down until it matches again. And you might say the A looks kind of weird. The crossbar is too high, but sometimes that's a good thing. If you think about like the Casper logo or the Visa logo, they have a little weird thing on it. The Casper has a weird little coat hanger on the end of the C. It looks weird, but that's what makes it ownable. So sometimes you are looking for something that looks a little bit weird. Um, so don't be afraid, embrace the weird sometimes. You can get too weird, but you know, it's it's good to try. I think this is looking neat. So maybe we kind of get these a little closer together. I can already see that these Fs, they're a little bit too wide still, I think. So I'm going to just bring in that, that head serif on my F, this little spot here, this finial, I guess we might call it. And we're just gonna see if we can't make that look a little bit smoother. I think that's looking pretty cool. And maybe we even, what if this just extends out a little further too? There's something kind of cool about that. So again, let's round those corners because this is a very rounded font. So we'll go to what fits. Let's see, that's looking good. Maybe a little bit more. And yeah, I think that's better. It might be a little bit too much, but there's something interesting about it. And you can see that's interesting already. Doesn't that look very intentional? It might look too much like a cross out, but there's there's something going on there and there's something to that. So that that is a really fun way. It looks, it definitely doesn't look like just standard and that's that's a good thing. So maybe if we also decided to stick with one of these, we would extend up, you know, this T and maybe that T also kind of goes up, something like that. I don't know. We could, we could definitely ideate on this and iterate on this to kingdom come. And that's kind of the fun part of customizing existing fonts is you have a lot more time than creating something from scratch, you're working with great bones already. So it just, it can be such a fun process. Okay, last but, last but not least, swashes. Swashes can be so fun. I've got this font here, which is a font I designed. It was my very first font with Retro Supply Co called Palm Canyon Drive. I've seen it everywhere from Lizzo videos to Taylor Swift videos. It's been an amazing ride. <laughs> so let's use it. Let's go ahead and take the Z out of the, out of our little um, type, area, put it on its own so that we can kind of work with it. We're going to shift select both of those and go command shift O to outline everything. And because this is a monoline, I'm going to do the same thing I did last time. And I'm just going to use my path tool to create my swash. And I want my swash to kind of be like this way more, way more exciting, way more of an underline than it is right now. So I'm just going to draw it quite far and I'm going to turn that to a stroke. And let's see how, what thickness we need to get at to be closer. Okay, that's pretty close. And then I'm gonna go to my stroke and I'm gonna go around because everything in this font is rounded. Now, for now, I'm just going to cut off the current, the current bottom of this Z so that we can see what our, our swash will look like. I'm just gonna cut that from the path. Ooh, look at that, look at that. That is nice. And then you can just finesse. Like I said, you use your direct select by just clicking A, and that's a quick way to just start, you know, adjusting the handles, adjusting the anchor points, seeing how you can get things to look nice and smooth and consistent. 
and that looks really nice already. I might even just because if, if this was a logo, this might this really tall ascender might get tough um, for application. So I might take that ascender down. Um, but already that's looking so nice. A swash underline like this, or even like if you had an R and you had this, you know, the R like kind of swash down, those are really great ways to add a little bit of zazz to, to your, your design. So look how far we got today. Look at how much cool stuff. There's so many fun things to play with. Um, definitely give it a try. Give us a tag. Like I said, we're at hashtag Adobe live and you can tag us at, at Adobe. And thank you so much for hanging out with us today. We had a blast. Um, like I said, everything's available to watch if you want, if you missed yesterday or the day before, um, and we'll be back tomorrow. We'll be doing, I guess, gosh, what's next. Um, we'll be doing a Q and a on Friday and then tomorrow we're going to be doing quick tips and tricks. So like using, um, using the calligraphy tool, using, uh, brushes rather is what I should say, uh, using monoline, just basically making type really quickly in, in a lot of fun ways with all the different tools in Adobe. So definitely join us tomorrow, same place, same time. Thanks so much for tuning in and we'll see you later. Thank you.